Boston is one of my favorite cities. You know, between the architecture and the old buildings and the streets and all that kind of stuff, it's just a great place. And going with that is my thirst for knowledge on, you know, eco-friendly building systems and things like that. Today we're at the New England Sustainability as a conference on all different products that go into uh, building, you know, an eco-friendly, super insulated home. So come with me. We'll go inside. We'll see all kinds of vendors and products, and uh, you know, hopefully you'll see some of those products. So come with me. Yeah, this is great. Great. We're here at uh, you know Nessie, which is like Sustainable Energy Association here, and they have a Boston trade show going on. And so we're meeting with Sand and Water Heating. I got John Miles here from Sand, and he's going to talk hey, about his products. Sand. How are you? Doing great. Thanks Doing for great. stopping by the booth. Exciting. Exciting. We're, uh, yeah, we're excited. You, these are some neat products that you have and, and really help out when we talk sustainability and eco-friendly and all that. Well, I think that's actually one of the greatest things about this. I mean, this is a sort of a triple threat unit in terms of both sustainability and efficiency and also performance. I mean, I think that gets left right. alone some of the times. You, you get these products that are sustainable, they're super efficient, right. but you don't maybe get the performance level that you expect out of these things. And I think this unit actually has it So what all actually through. are we talking about and what it does it do? Yeah. So this is essentially a really different take on a heat pump water heater. Mm -hmm. um, a normal heat pump water heater sort of essentially lives in the home with you and it's it's kind of that tall tank with yeah. the extra part on top and that takes the heat from the, the home or the yeah. area it's in whether it's in a right. basement or whatever and cools that space down but delivers that heat into the mm -hmm. into the hot water and you get some hot water out of it and things like that this unit essentially takes that and it's almost like we took a saw saw and mm -hmm. took the top off it okay yeah. and then molded it a little bit and turned it into this outdoor unit here that mm -hmm. looks very much like a mini split yeah you know mm -hmm. if you if you're familiar with that but actually it takes the energy out of the air and puts it into the water being outside means that we can do some different things with it one we can make it bigger in terms of capacity okay right, right? you're not stuck with a certain footprint not we're stuck with a certain it. footprint we don't have to worry about overcooling the space inside the home it would be nice if you had that thing at two ton but who wants to put two tons yep. of cooling into the house right. right so we can put it outside and we can do that because it's outside obviously it's got to work in lots of different ambience right mm -hmm. it's all very well saying yeah this unit just works in florida right but we need to work it in new england we need to work it in alaska canada and things right. like that so one of the things that we changed on it is we don't use a conventional refrigerant. No. No. Um, you know, so your 410As yeah, right. and your 134As, they're good refrigerants, but they have some drawbacks in terms of getting A, hot water, and B, temperatures when it's cold outside. Mm -hmm. So we actually changed to carbon dioxide refrigerant. Oh, CO2. CO2. Wow. And this CO2 has actually been used in Japan for about 15 to 17 years in this technology. Um, Mm -hmm. And this obviously is a Japanese unit that we, right. we bring in front of you, Sandin, is a Japanese company. But the great thing about CO2 is it allows me, even at negative 20, to lift cold water from about 45, 50 degrees, 40 degrees, yep. up to 150 uh -huh. and above at that temperature. So you can get great performance out of these units even in the super cold ambient temperatures. Oh. So that's great about what that. Kind of, what kind of COPs do you get? Well, the like COP this? wise, we're gonna get around about 5.2 at 67 degrees, just under three at 14 degrees, oh. wow. and about 1.8 at negative 20. That's amazing. that's amazing. Yeah, no, it is Everybody kind of cool. Everybody else has switched over to resistance. And uh, every, like everyone else, typically yeah. with these units, you get below 40 degrees Fahrenheit and they're in resistance mode, yep. right? Mm -hmm. um, but we're all heat pump all the time, right? There is no electric element in our storage tank. So we do a couple of sizes of storage tank with 43 and an 83, mm -hmm. stainless steel storage tanks as well. So mm -hmm. they've got some longevity to them. Um, but we're all heat pump all the time, and that's really good from a, an efficiency point of view. Right. You know, one of the things that's worrying about the hybrid styles is that if you have a large drawer on them and the, uh, the refrigeration side can't keep up, they'll okay. click to electric heat to yeah, right. sustain that. I don't do that. I, you know, I don't that's have amazing. that ability. So you're always getting that COP. Or always that getting that COP and that bang for the buck. buck. In, right. in doing that so efficiency wise it's there and because as we mentioned a little earlier 
I'm making 150, 160, maybe even 170 degree hot water out, out, of, out of just this little oh thing gosh, here, wow. right? The one thing with CO2 is that it's the gas that everything is measured against for global warming, right? right? right. Ozone depletion is sort of not really that much of an issue with uh, refrigerants anymore, but global warming is now the, the big thing and mm -hmm. the synthetic refrigerants, the 410As, the 134, all have global warming in the 1400 to 2000 range. And what that means is that one pound of 410A, for example, does the damage of 2000 pounds worth of CO2. The next thing, you know, thinking as we talk, so it is self-contained in that respect, mm -hmm. that is a complete unit. The only interconnection between that and the storage tank is just some piping? For yeah, it's, and, and essentially it's potable water. And okay. So what happens with the tank is the tank has four connections on it. Two of the normal connections, cold water in from your well or city supply, mm -hmm. hot water out obviously to your showering and, and domestic mm -hmm. hot water production. And then there's two extra ports on here. One is cold water to the heat pump. Mm -hmm. and that's a half inch line and you can be about 50 foot away from uh, the tank on this unit okay. you can actually run that and then hot water back so what's going to happen is you we bring that 50 degree cold water from the bottom of the tank mm -hmm. to the unit and heat it up to the set point that you've set whether it's 150 160 or even mm -hmm. higher and then we drop that back but it goes in right at the top of the tank so that means that there's always hot water. Whenever this thing's working, there's always a little bit, there's always right hot water the putting in at the top of the tank. So you're not having to mix that tank up. So the tank becomes what we call stratified, mm -hmm. right? Where you've got cold on the bottom mm -hmm. and then a lot of hot on the top. So as the tank fills up with cold water because you're showering or mm -hmm. you know, doing the dishes or whatever, that cold water stays at the bottom, but the hot always stays at the top. And the two things, two different temperatures don't really mix. You've always got hot available at the top then the oh. system kicks on, puts more in hot in at the top, and it pushes down that sort of plug of cold right. water. So oh. well, it's an interesting dynamic yeah. inside of the tank, a little bit yeah. different to a normal yeah. water well, heater, yeah, right? Totally, totally, totally yeah. different. And on that, and this, you know, likes that cold water coming back to yeah. get the COP. Yeah, and, and well, it's also about the lift, right? So the unit's really happy lifting that water from 45 to 150, mm -hmm. right? And that's how we get the the, mat, the big bang for our buck in terms of the electrical energy we put in, the heat we steal from the outside, then we get that bang for the buck in terms of our COP and our performance level on these units. Yeah, I appreciate that, you know, talking through all the different products and, you know, how it fits and how it works on there, John. That, that is really neat. Appreciate your time. Yeah, well, we appreciate and, uh, you coming by. I mean, yeah. uh, it's uh, it's great to talk about the sustainability and the efficiency and the performance, as I say. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I'd be remiss without saying that one of the things also we've, we've done on this is really worked hard on, on our quality level. Sandin is actually a um, very large manufacturer in the automotive space, so we're very used to quality um, right. on those systems. So this is a stainless steel tank with a 15-year warranty, 10-year warranty on the heat pump, including a three-year or a six-year replacement yeah. warranty on yeah, the system. Yeah, yeah, so you guys aren't new to the block. Been no. doing a lot of automotive We've been doing a lot, yeah, stuff. yeah, we, we do a huge amount of work, but mostly you see our work with somebody else's badge on it. This yeah. is one of the first products that we've actually really um, done a huge amount of, of promoting the sand and name and putting it out there you know for example we make 1.2 million compressors a year for coca-cola or right. co2 as well yeah we'll see there you go for their see, vending machines we don't know about yeah that. right you know so uh, it's that's interesting that's awesome. how it all intertwines yeah all right John. well thank thanks you. dave appreciate, appreciate your it time. That was have a great, great one information all right hey that was awesome john kind of walked us through all that you know the product and what went on with it you know on the co2 and and you know the heat pump water heater how it ties together the eco-friendly to me it's got all the pluses you know again that refrigerant uh, co2 really high cops that, that we can do on there you add that with the high water temperature you can get out it's just amazing for what it can do on that product and i just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention it is a neat you know, if you're looking for that on a, on a high efficiency water heating aspect, this would be a great product to uh, you know, definitely investigate.